Hey sports fans, are you in the market for Florida sports or just keeping up with the latest in the panhandle? Palm Tree Sports is a dedicated audio hub to all things sports in the Sunshine State. We cover current events, big news, heavily favored opinions all across the NFL, NBA, MLB, and so much more. So come check us out every Saturday evening at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for a down south education on Florida sports and athletics. It's hosted by yours truly, Corey Pujols. And it's powered by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. And that is us, baby. Welcome to another episode of Palm Tree Sports. I am your host, Corey Pujols. And as always, it is brought to you and powered by IE Sports Radio. You know what it is, your direct feed for all that is sports. Welcome to this lovely show, guys. I am very excited to have you here today. We will try to keep the show uh, in a timely manner as we do have quite a few things to talk about. And we will be getting deeper into the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on the three and out show at another time. So be on the lookout for that, guys, as I will be discussing that with Larry. And we will go over everything that is going on in the city of Tampa as far as the Bucks are concerned. I look forward to bringing you guys that information. But as for now, we are going to get it popping with Palm Tree Sports. Again, there's a lot to discuss. Not a whole bunch of time, but I'm going to get it to you guys. So let's go ahead and get busy with it, shall we? So, starting with Tampa Bay, this is going to be some information that you guys may also hear on 3 and Out Podcast, so be on the lookout for that, as I mentioned earlier. But there are some things, some information that I would like to share with you and some things to talk about, starting with the preseason. Now, we're going to go over the preseason for the Bucks, the Jags, and the Dolphins alike, so I'll be giving you that information right away. If you're here in Florida and you haven't gotten that information, don't worry, I got you covered. Starting with Tampa Bay, the preseason starts on Friday, August 11th at 7 p.m., and that's versus the Steelers. Now, for those of you who are familiar with Tampa Bay, this is a typical thing. The first preseason game in Tampa Bay for the last almost 30 years now has been on a Friday. It's something that I quite enjoy. It's like a bonus for making it to the end of the week, you know, like a cookie for doing something good or a sticker, if you guys remember that back in school. We are going to be playing against the Steelers and you know, that's an age-old rivalry, the Bucks and the Steelers. When they hook it up, there's always something to prove between these two teams. So I look forward to seeing how this preseason um, game goes, considering both of these teams are considerably a lot younger since what they have been in the past with, respectively speaking, Ben Roethlisberger and now Tom Brady both being retired. So again, I look forward to seeing what the rookies on both sides of the ball do for both teams, and I can't wait for that game. Again, that first preseason game is going to be August 11th at 7 p.m. That's versus the Steelers again, guys, just in case you missed that. The other two preseason opponents that we have uh, during this preseason are going to be the Jets and the Ravens, two very interesting teams to have a first look at. Of course, Aaron Rodgers will most likely not be playing in the Jets game. Same thing with Lamar Jackson, most likely will not be playing for the Ravens. However, that will get us a chance to see what these younger players on this teams, on these respectable teams will be able to do. And I can't wait to see what they produce, especially against uh, Kyle Trask, who will get plenty of time to play in the offseason. And that is something that we're going to also talk about, which are the young players here in Tampa Bay. <laughs> Excuse me, my apologies, guys. Uh, the Bucks have 27 first year players, okay, that are currently on the roster. All right. Now, obviously, they're not all going to make it. Uh, we know how this game goes. It's very cutthroat at times, and this is an example of what that will look like. On the flip side to that, I urge you guys, there have been some very, very good moments coming from these young players. And when I mean good moments, I mean interceptions. I mean, you know, forcing the ball out of the defender's hand and out of the quarterback's hand much faster, th- thereby disrupting the play. Both Baker Mayfield and Kyle Trask have looked pretty sharp for the most part so far in training camp with Baker Mayfield looking the better of the two. Kyle Trask not too far behind. It's very clear to us that Kyle Trask has improved greatly and we look forward to seeing those improvements during the preseason Will he will get the time to shine as will Baker Mayfield. I do suspect that Baker will win the starting job. However, Guys, hold your breath because Kyle Trask is fighting. He is not just laying on his back. He is fighting for the job. Among some of the names of players who have stood out, it should be no surprise that early on, Kalijah Cansey, uh, uh, Cody Mount, 
and Yaya Diab uh, Diaby and Siravasia Dennis are all been names that have been tossed around camp so far, more so, a little bit more so than the others. However, that does not mean to count out these other young prospects. Again, we have players all over. We have wide receivers who are looking to make the cut. We have tight ends, a bunch of tight ends who are looking to make the cut, as well as some defensive players that are also going to look for time in the rotation as we get closer to this preseason starting. Guys, I cannot express the gratitude that I have for Tampa Bay and Jason like for going after these players players that are seemingly going to fit the mold very well and even though they may not end up with a job in Tampa Bay if they're capable which I believe they all are of leaving good stuff on tape they will be on rosters around the league I think a lot of these guys are players that other teams should pay great attention to because again just because Tampa Bay can't sign them doesn't mean that other teams can't sign them unfortunately with the 53 man roster cut in the 10 man practice squad which is available there will be some players some good names uh, especially with these undrafted free agents that will find themselves on the market so other teams will be paying attention and again i look forward to seeing who makes the team uh another big deal with tampa bay is that for those of you who know they have been doing the top 100 players of the 2023 season, well, 2022 into the 2023 season, that is. And one of those players that was on that list was Tristan Wirfs, our all-pro right tackle, converted now to left tackle. First things first, I have to address the issue with the NFL. The NFL is notorious for snubbing the Buccaneers, okay? Now, I... I'm sure some of you may have noticed this, but guys, if you pay close attention, if you watch a lot of football like I have over the years, you've noticed that on ESPN, NFL Network, ABC, NBC, and CBS, that Tampa Bay is not a featured team often, if any. What does that mean? We get less primetime games than, than some of the other teams. And also, when you watch the commercials, you realize there's not a lot of Tampa Bay personnel that you see there outside of when Tom Brady was here for the three years that he was. We won a Super Bowl, made the playoffs three times, won the division twice. Guys, this is not by mistake. The NFL has teams that they like and teams that they do not like. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are one of those teams that the NFL does not like, and that's okay. We don't mind being the, um, what do you call that, black sheep of the family, if you will, because we've gotten two Super Bowls out of it, out of them telling us that we can't. So, I really look forward to seeing what happens with Tristan Wirfs moving over to left tackle, but let's be 100% clear, he is much, much better than 98th, I believe it was, on the list that they gave him. Guys, this is an all-pro tackle who's allowed what? Seven sacks since he started for the last three years? Guys, think about that for a second. The man has allowed less than a dozen sacks in three years since his rookie season, which he started his rookie season. Okay, guys, just take that in consideration. This guy should be so much higher on the list. Same thing with Mike Evans, who was listed at 53, and so on and so on. I'm sure there are other players that there will be to talk about, but I will leave that for another time. The Buccaneers are a team that should have a little bit more respect. Even though we are in the worst division in football, we should still be respected because when the Seahawks did it back, of, I think it was a, just over a decade ago that they did it. If you guys remember, the Seahawks made the playoffs at 7-9, and nine, and then they went and they beat the crap out of the Saints. And if you guys remember Beast Quake Part 1, Marshawn Lynch running through that Saints defense, let me tell you, as a Buccaneers fan, it was beautiful. It was absolutely magnificent. So, I say that to say this, guys. Tampa Bay is going to be better than what you guys think we are. And sleep on us if you want to. It'll be a rude awakening, especially with Baker Mayfield, presumably to be at the helm with this receiving core and this relatively talented running back core, as well as an offensive line that seems to be gelling together better and better each week. Let's move on to the Jaguars. The Jaguars preseason starts on a Saturday. That would be August 12th at 5 p.m. And they are playing the Cowboys. All right, guys. So I don't suspect that Prescott's going to start. The Jaguars will most likely have a deeper roster than the Cowboys. I don't specifically think that the Cowboys are one of the better teams in the league, although they do have skills at skilled positions. It's going to take a lot more than that and a better defense all right, than what they have right now to win that division, which I don't think that they will win the division. My money is still on the Eagles, as they should be. And with that being said, the other opponents for the Jaguars this preseason will be the Lions and the Dolphins. As you guys may know, the preseason is usually about teams who don't play each other very much, which is what we're seeing here. These are the teams that they play the least when you watch their schedules happen over so many years. 
So that's why these games will be interesting games to watch. I myself will be looking forward to seeing the Jaguars Dolphins game. That is going to be an in-house game, and if you, we, it, basically what that means is they don't have to leave the state of Florida, right? Uh, either the Jags will be traveling down to Miami or Miami will be traveling up to Duval. Either way, they're staying in Florida, which means it's going to be hot. It's going to be humid. doesn't matter. They know what to expect, and so do we, guys. Now, Antonio Johnson and Chad Muma are among two of the young players who are making plays early. Each of them had interceptions with the first one coming by Antonio Johnson, the second one by linebacker Chad Muma. Like I said, these are both young guys who are sparking eyes, uh, opening eyes, I should say, in training camp. Interceptions off of Trevor Lawrence are not necessarily something that you see very commonly, but you can expect him to bounce back and be better than ever. What does that say for the young players? That they're paying attention and that they understand how the defense is to be played. Yes, it's just training camp. However, what happens in training camp is what happens in the pros. How do we know? Look at the Chiefs. Patrick Mahomes won the starting quarterback job. People are like, oh, Patrick, okay, yeah, he looks like a good quarterback. We'll see. We didn't know he was going to be this. The only people in the room that knew he was going to be this was Andy Reid. That's a perfect example, guys. Same thing with Tariq Hill, who's now with the Dolphins. Same thing with Travis Kelsey, who is their all-pro tight end. And I just want to use as an analogy so that you guys can have an idea of what it looks like. Now, those are the young guys. Let's talk about one of the old guys in the room, Calvin Ridley. Rumor has it, not rumor, Jags. You know, they're reporting this guy's on fire. And I'm going to be honest with you, it doesn't surprise me one bit. The kid was on fire when he was in Atlanta. I believe that the gambling stint that they punished him for was just completely unnecessary and people gamble on less. I mean, we gamble when we buy tickets for the Powerball in the Mega Millions, which are just at absurd numbers right now. So imagine how he must feel coming back to the game. He must be coming back with a vengeance. And that should be scary for the entire AFC South, which is well, let's just call it a really bad division outside of the Jaguars. And with that being said, I think this guy will have a reckoning of a return season. And I think a lot of teams will be upset that they didn't make a power play to get him sooner or when they had the opportunity, I should say. I look forward to seeing Calvin really decimate defenses as long as it's not Tampa Bay's. We're good to go, baby. Go Duval. You guys stand up. You have a great team and a great season to look forward to, especially with all these pieces paying dip, uh, pieces paying dividends to you guys. Now then, let's go ahead and move on to the Dolphins. The Dolphins preseason starts also on Friday, August 11th, same as the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at 7 p.m. So those games, you can flip back and forth. If you're here in Florida, that's most like, that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be flipping back and forth. So I'll be watching both of them. I'm going to have my eyes on the Bucks game a little bit more for obvious purposes. But guys, I will be paying attention to the Dolphins as they also have some interesting situations going on. But I wouldn't call them good situations. Well, that game is going to be against the Falcons again. That's August 11th at 7 p.m. The other two preseason games will be against the Texans and the Jags. And as I mentioned earlier, that means that it's going to be an in-house game. So both of these teams know what to expect. But that's about all the good news that I have for you about the Dolphins. Here's the bad news. Jalen Ramsey went down. He was carted off the field at the end of Thursday's practice, okay? And again, I stress, this was at the end of practice. This is why when you're in practice, you have to gauge yourself because things like this can happen at any moment. And Jalen Ramsey, who is an all-pro, I don't like him as a player. I think he's a crybaby. But as a player, he has shown himself to be one of the better cornerbacks in the league, and I can't denounce that. Aside from the crybaby factor, oh, I'm not getting my way. I want to be on a team that's winning. I don't want to be on a team that's struggling. Fine. Whatever. That's your prerogative, dude. I'll say this much, though. The injury doesn't look good on him. It doesn't. He, this is his third team. He's only been in the league how many years, guys? Somebody put that in the comments if you don't mind. He's been in the league like what? Seven years? Six, seven years, give or take? Not a long time for him to be on his third team. It, it's, it's giving relationship issues, you know? or daddy issues. I don't know. I'm just speaking on it because it seems to be something with Jalen Ramsey every season. Okay. Every season, you know, a couple of seasons ago was him getting burnt by Mike Evans. Is he really that good? Hey, depends on your viewpoint, but I'll tell you this. There was a slight piece of good information that comes out of this. And that is, if you guys haven't already heard Dolphins fans, don't worry. You guys are signing Eli Apple to a one year deal amid the Ramsey injury. So obviously, like I said, this deal comes just because of the injury to Jalen Ramsey. But what this means is that you guys are going to have a stalwart, very seasoned and good veteran who can play 
Uh, I believe both the nickel and the outside, which are lead receiver or against the lead receiver. And Eli App Apple has already been proven himself to be one of the better cornerbacks in the league over the last few years. He's approaching a decade in the league, so I look forward to seeing what he's able to bring to this team, as this team is going to need the help, especially missing Jalen Ramsey, guys. So, we'll see what happens moving forward. For the Dolphins, like I said, hopefully they're able to work it out, but it's not going to be an easy fix missing Jalen Ramsey. He's going to be gone for a couple of months, so Dolphins fans, get ready for that. Uh, you guys are going to be holding your breath just like all the Cincinnati Bengals fans are right now with JB going down. Both of those stories broke, I think, on the same exact day. So we'll have those guys in prayer, but in the meantime, between time, they're going to have to rest up and get healed up so this, they can be ready as soon as possible, specifically Jalen Ramsey. So that is what I have for you guys for the NFL uh, on today's show. Let's take our first break of the evening, and when we get back, we're going to get into a little bit of what to watch for today and tomorrow. We got a little bit of NBA news, some Rays news, and then I also have some AEW and UFC updates for you guys as well, especially if you're looking for something to watch tonight. It's going to be a packed night with a whole bunch of good stuff to watch. My name is Corey Pujols. I am your host of Palm Tree Sports, and as you know, it is always brought to you and powered by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. We'll be back in two minutes, guys. Hang in there. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Davidson. It's your boy, Natalia's Lock. And we are the hosts of Fast Break here on IE Sports Radio, where we discuss everything in the world of basketball from prep to the pros. You guys should definitely check us out, man. Sunday, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. We got all the basketball information you guys need. So we look forward to you guys listening in. And please do, because we are the best basketball show on this side of the Mississippi. And please do check us out on Twitter at Fastbreak ISR. D Lock, where's our time again? 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. That give you guys plenty of time on a Sunday. Tune in. It's your boy, Marcus Los Great. Here to give you what you want. Here to give you what you need. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm coming to you live. Straight from your mama's basement with a crispy white tea. <laughs> We are coming to you live every Tuesday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Powered by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Make no mistake about it, guys. Marcus knows exactly what he's talking about when he gets on this show. Love's awesome, baby. It's a wonderful show. You guys should check it out. But right now, we're on Palm Tree Sports. I'm Corey Pujols, your host. And as always, is brought to you and powered by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Guys, I got a tiny bit of information coming out of the NBA for you. For those of you who are Heat fans, unfortunately, the Magic are not doing anything right now. So there's not much to talk about with them. But the Heat, this isn't necessarily something that is a good thing 
but it's not a bad thing. It's more of a celebratory thing, and that would be that long time heat. Udonis Haslam is finally, and I don't want to say finally in the sense of he's finally leaving, but he has finally announced his retirement, and I'm using the term finally because, man, 20 years is a long time, guys. If you think about some of the other players who have made it to year 20, LeBron, who's still playing, God bless him, God bless his son, for those of you who know about Bronny, prayers up to him, but this is about Udonis, and we're just talking about some of the other players who have made it to 20 years, and I gotta admit, Kobe's another one. Kobe retired at year 20, so that's a big deal. And so when you look at Udonis, he's in great company when you talk about making it 20 years. So congratulations to him on the multiple world championships with the Miami Heat, as well as the longevity of his career. He is considered to be one of the greatest Heat players, and just by the pure fact that he has always been there, he has always been in the trenches with this team. This is a guy that I remember watching when I was in high school, and he's now retiring, and I have two kids, I, you know, I work a job, I don't go to school anymore, things like that, you, you get what I mean, so it's one of those things that it seems just completely wild to the human brain that, you know, somebody could do something like this that's so physically demanding for 20 years and love it as much as he did, and that's one thing we know about Udonis is he loved the game of basketball, and he was a diehard Heat. Uh, Heat member, I should say, you know, not just a player, but a member of that squad, a member of that Heat family who will continue to live on with the Miami Heat. So congratulations to him. Big ups to him for what he was able to accomplish. Now, let's slide on over to the MLB, pun intended, I guess. Uh, Perfect timing, right? Anyhow, let's talk about the Rays, all right? So the Rays, as you guys know, they have been struggling to say the least okay this is a team again who started out as the hottest team with the hottest start probably in MLB history rosters absolutely nut cracked from head to toe and it's something I look forward to seeing I love our players I love our team I don't love the injuries guys and that seems to be one of the biggest issues that have been plaguing a lot of big sports team if you guys remember the Buccaneers a couple years ago you guys see the Dolphins right now over the last year and a half they've been dealing with a ton of injuries this is another example of that the Rays have been very very injured more or less since a month before the break until now, okay? Guys, we got to find a way to stay healthy because it's killing us. It's literally killing us, Smalls. So, excuse me, my apologies. Today's game is going to be the second game of the three-game series against the Houston Astros. That game starts at 7.15 p.m., so da na na no, no, no. If you're looking for something to watch tonight, there's the first bit of action that's going to be coming your way. Like I said, 7.15 p.m., you're going to have the Houston Astros versus the Tampa Bay Rays. Both of these teams have relatively good records. However, neither one of these teams are on fire at the moment. So I will go ahead and give you a quick breakdown of what to expect. The Rays sitting at 63-43, and 43, second in the AL East. Still playing good baseball, just struggling a lot right now, like I said, between injuries and confidence issues. But this is a team that can rebound at any moment. All we need to do is, is get catch a wave of momentum and go from there like a surfer in, in California Bay. Now, the Astros are sitting at 58 and 46, all right? That's a plus 14. It's something that you look forward to seeing is two teams hooking it up to see which way it, the game is going to go. Yesterday's game ended at a 4-3 Rays victory, so looking forward to seeing the Rays pull out a second game and perhaps go uh, three games straight and wipe the Houston Astros in this series. That would be a wonderful bit of news for us. Uh, unfortunately, not necessarily for Houston. So, you know, cry me a river later, Houston. But let's go Rays, okay? Now, the final game of that three-game series is going to be tomorrow at 2.10 p.m. So if you're looking for something to watch around lunchtime, you know what I'm going to tell you. Turn on the Rays game and let's see how those boys do. Early afternoon game, so the game should be over somewhere around 5, 5.30-ish. Hopefully, we, you know, fingers will be crossed just in case you have anything else to get into later that afternoon. I, myself, will be checking out the game. I will be following the game probably on the app. If I'm shopping, you know, but if I'm home, I'll have it on the TV as long as it's on there. So, guys, I look forward to seeing that third game, especially after the Rays win tonight. Rays, please don't let me down, all right? Don't, I got a lot of faith in y'all. We got a lot of faith in you guys. Come on, Rays. Also, the next series is going to be a three-game series against the Yanks. That series starts Monday, July 31st at 7.05 p.m., the Yanks are sitting at 54 and 49, so by no means playing the best baseball, but they are plus five right now. So shout out to the Yankees. My mom likes the Yankees. So, you know, there you go, mom. A little shout out for them. But it's all about the Rays. So hopefully the Rays can put this, you know, another win together tonight and then, you know, just carry that on through the series against the Yankees. And, you know, before we know it, we'll be looking at the at the best team in the league, rightfully back atop the mountain. But we'll see what happens. Again, 
injuries plaguing this team, especially before the trade deadline, is a little crucial, and that's something that we see happening a lot. We're not the only team going through it, but I'll tell you what. When it's your team and, and you're a fan of the, you know, the boys that are going through it, that are getting on the mound every night, it's pretty painful to see, you know, I guess we'll have to wait and see. And yes, we are hoping that they, we could take care of those boys down south. You know, Houston's a good team, so we're going to have to just, we have to grit our teeth. You know, it was a run one ball game that we won yesterday, and you guys know how I feel about those games. We have to win run one ball games. If you don't, it's not good news. Now, we are three and four in the last seven games. That's trending a little bit upwards compared to the what the seven games were before that, which we were like two and five, and before that we were like one and seven or one and six. Okay, so hopefully the Rays, like I said, can get this together. I'm looking forward to them putting it all together and actually, you know, pro pro providing some offense. They've been playing relatively good defense for the most part. Not a whole bunch of blowouts, but we did have that Mariners pitcher, you know pitched the whole game and they won seven to one that's not something we're trying to see again right Ray? so let's you know let's get back to defense let's produce on offense let's get people on the base and let's drive them home rbis are the name of the game right baby so that's what's going on there for the Rays. let's go ahead and jump on over to combat sports which we'll start with AEW first and then we'll wrap up with the ufc as the ufc card is lights out no pun intended the main event for AEW's collision card tonight will be FTR defending the tag titles versus MJF and Adam Cole. Guys, I am a huge, 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 humongous Adam Cole fan. I've been watching this guy since before he blew up in WWE. So I am a huge fan of what he brings to the table. I love his wrestling style. I'm glad he made it back from injury. I look forward to seeing this main event. But... Unfortunately, due to the 291 card, I may miss a good portion of it because I will be flipping back and forth. I'm going to have the TV and the laptop on, guys. So I'm going to be all in tonight for this. It's going to be a great match. I am very impartial to FTR. I, I enjoyed the tag team. I used to not like the tag team, but since they have moved into their own light, I love what they bring to the table, and I love their style of tag team wrestling. MJF is just absolutely a showman. He might be the best bad guy in all of pro wrestling, and it's somebody that I look forward to seeing, even when I don't look forward to seeing him. But as a spoiler alert, guys... It's going to break my heart when MJF and Adam Cole separate because we know it's going to happen and I'm pretty sure MJF is going to stab Adam in the back. But it is what it is. You know, we're going to have to take that with a grain of salt. Moving on to the big card, the biggest card of tonight, which is going to be UFC 291. Marcus, I'm pretty sure, covered this in his show. I'm just touching on it because I like to get around to everything. And this is what I personally will be watching outside of the Rays game and the AW card. It's going to be Dustin Poirier versus Justin Gaethje for the BMF title. Okay, guys, so the BMF title stands for baddest insert adjective here. Okay, you guys know what I'm saying. And... That fight is going to be a jaw dropper, if not a jaw breaker, okay? I'm going to go Diamond Dustin Poirier, as I am a huge, 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 huge Dustin fan. Louisiana Lafayette, stand up, boys. He is here, and he is trying to go 2-0 against Justin Gaethje. But let me be the first to tell you, what they say about Justin Gaethje is true. He hits hard. He's got a great kick. And let me tell you, I, for one, wouldn't want to go into the cage with either one of these guys, mostly because I fight at 125 and they fight at, one, you know, 155. But, hey, you get what I'm saying. These are two supremely talented, two of the best in the world at the moment at what they do. And I look forward to seeing this fight. I don't see it going the, I think this is a five-rounder, so I don't see it going the full 25 as the first one did not. I'm going to take... Dustin Diamond Poirier by third round submission. I think that they will hit each other enough, but Justin may very well give up the ground game as Dustin tends to be a little bit better on the ground than Justin Gaethje is. That is going to be my pick for the main event. The co-main event is just as good as going to be one Jan Bohovic versus Alex Pineda. This is going to be Polish power versus the Brazilian uh, one punch killer, if you will, one punch man, but Brazil's version of it. Guys, Jan Bohovic has the better ground game. Here's what my problem is. We've seen Jan get hit with the left before, and Alex's left hand is literally the death touch. Okay? If you haven't seen this guy this this guy fight before, I encourage you to go look up his highlights before this fight starts. I'm telling you right now, I'm gonna go Alex Pineda either first or second round KO or TKO. It will be stoppage unless Jan gets his hands on him and decides to wrestle. But if he doesn't decide to wrestle, I don't see how he wins this fight standing up. Okay? Now, there are some other great fights on this card that I want to address, so I'm going to go through these pretty briefly. 
Tony Ferguson returning after his loss to Michael Chandler. It was a horrific loss, guys. He got kicked in the face and went straight to sleep. Face planted and everything. He's fighting Bobby Green, one of the most diverse strikers at 155, and a guy with a big bag. I don't know necessarily who has the best shot at winning this because they both fight very unorthodoxly and not in the unorthodox stance, not to be confused with that. So, I look forward to seeing how this fight goes. If I had to pick, I'm going to go Turkey Tony Ferguson because he does have better mechanics than Bobby. However, Bobby's flashiness and his creativity could get Tony out of there as he's been subject to that in the past. We also have Kevin Holland versus Michael Shise. I listened to the... Um, they, they talked about this fight on the podcast. I listened to what Kevin had to say. Uh, Michael, my apologies, had to say about Kevin Holland, and he respects him a great deal. I don't know if the respect will get him the window, as Kevin Holland is one of the most diverse strikers and one of the best knockout artists in all of the UFC. I look forward to seeing how this fight goes, but I'm going to go Kevin Holland, second or third round TKO. I wouldn't be surprised if Michael wins the decision, though. So, guys, keep an eye on that match. Circle it from fight of the night, all right? Circle that fight for fight of the night. And then also, Derek the Black Beast Lewis versus Marcos Algirio de, La, de Lima. That's going to be a phenomenal match. Both of these guys are, are tremendous strikers. I'm going to rock with Derek Lewis in the first round just because when Derek lands, people go to sleep. He's got the most knockouts in UFC light, uh, heavyweight history, and he's you know called the Black Beast for a reason. The man's an absolute dog in the cage, and that's going to be my pick for knockout of the night if it's not Alex Pineda. All right? Pereira, Pineda, depends on where you come come from how you say it i say it both ways you know your prerogative guys unfortunately the little bit of bad news that i have is not only was paulo costa's fight canceled as i spoke about last week but so is steven wonderboy thompson's fight has been canceled due to michael Pereira not making weight so this is something that has plagued martial arts and not just martial arts but all other type of combat sports for those of you who watch college wrestling or olympic style wrestling brazilian jiu-jitsu tournaments that they have as well as the wrestling tournaments that they hold the amateur wrestling tournaments that they hold here in america it's just unfortunate when things like this happen, but they do happen all the time. With all that being said, guys, this card is going to be phenomenal. If you don't have anything to watch this evening or if you're looking for something to watch, I would encourage you guys. We got Rays Baseball at 7.15 this evening. We have AEW's uh, Collision Card, which starts at 8 p.m., so that's about 45 minutes after the Rays game start. And then also, the prelims for UFC 291 will be starting at 7 o'clock. So as I mentioned, in about a half hour, I'll be getting into all three of these uh, as we get closer into the latter part of the evening. I look forward to seeing what you guys have to say and I also hope you guys enjoy the content that comes your way simply because it's going to be a huge night for those of you who are boxing fans we have Spence versus Crawford as well if you would like to minimize the amount of action and you just want to stick with boxing that fight also happens tonight but that's all I got for you this week guys I really appreciate you guys dropping in to see what's going on here in the Sunshine State and along with what we have going on as far as the NFL the NBA and the Rays are concerned in the MLB. Next week, we'll be back at the exact same time, 6 p.m. on Saturday evening. Again, be there or beat me there, I should say, you know, and I'll be here to give you some more information. Of course, we will have a much longer show, as like I said before earlier in the show, we will be going over what's going on in Tampa Bay on Larry's show, and I look forward to talking about that as well. We'll get a little bit more into detail of that, but it's mostly going to cover some of the things we talked about earlier today. Just in case you missed it here, it'll be there too, guys. And yeah, of course, you know, you gotta, gotta show love to sports entertainment, right? Because we all love a good storyline, you know? guys and and sometimes that's what it's about it's a great it's, it's about a great storyline so you know there's that but again thank you guys so much for joining me here on palm tree sports my name is Corey pujols and i've been your host for palm tree sports radio which is brought to you empowered by ie sports radio your direct feed for all that is sports enjoy the rest of the weekend and just a little couple of words of wisdom for you guys as we exit enjoy your time with your family hold your loved ones and hug and kiss them while you have the opportunity life is short we see a lot a lot a lot of bad things happening around the world but this is one of the places where we can come together collectively have a good time talk about the things that we love and the things that we like and also what we have in common i'll be back next week guys again my name is Corey pujols and i will see you next time have a wonderfully blessed evening peace